today we're going to be talking about new FDA guidelines to informed consent, which is very briefly so you know what they are, and hopefully you have had a chance to review them or are already familiar with them. One of them is the guidance for sponsors, investigators, and inst institutional review boards, question and answers. And this is specifically for 21 CFR 50.25C. So this, again, was just a change related to clinicaltrials.gov language primarily, just clarifying what's needed there. And we'll be touching on that throughout the presentation, but you do have the full document. The other document that was sent to you was guidance on exculpatory language in informed consent. And this, again, is a draft guidance, but it is very interesting to me in some of the, the wording or some of the language that is considered to not be exculpatory because when I read it initially, I thought, well, I don't know. It seems like it's pinning the blame then on the sponsor and taking any, rather than just waiving patient rights, it seems it became a little bit more accusatory towards me, uh, for me when I read it. So we'll kind of look at some of that and then explain what the intent of this guidance document is and also, you know, consider what effects this may have on the industry. And then the other document that we'll be reviewing quite a bit is the proposed rules that came out September 1, 2011. And what I will just touch on very briefly with this document is that these are proposed. There's a number of very interesting changes. Some of them I really, really am very pleased to see that they're being considered. However, this is still in proposal stage, and in fact, the comment period was actually extended following this initial proposal. So we still don't have any final resolution on these. But again, food for thought. What does this mean for the future?